eMetrics Marketing Optimization Summit, San Francisco, and I'm here with uh, Jennifer Vincent Meyer. She's uh, the CEO of Strategent, so welcome. Uh, Jennifer, would, would you first share with us your responsibilities at uh, Strategent? Yeah. And a little bit about the company as well. Okay. We are a digital analytics agency, so the only thing that we do is analytics, but we do everything from strategy, KPI definition, dashboards, uh, hardcore implementation, testing and optimization, sort of end-to-end, -end, but all within the narrow vertical of analytics. Um, Strategent is headquartered in Chicago. I happen to work out of Minneapolis. Uh, my, my primary responsibility is to manage our client services team uh, to uh, help uh, grow and develop all of the, the consultants on the team, as well as do some consulting with our key accounts. Um, and as you know, I, I go around the country and do a workshop called uh, Pimp Your Reports. <laughs> And so I, I, I'm known for that as well. One of the fun things I do in my job. Okay, and one, you've been in the consulting industry for a long time. So, and web analytics is a, is a lot about consulting, either mm -hmm. if it's a, to internal teams in the company or, or to an external company. So would you share with us one or more tips uh, on how to provide a good service to whoever you're... Yep. Um, the first thing is I would recommend the book Flawless Consulting. It's an excellent book. But one of the, one of the key concepts is to understand uh, the sort of three different roles that a consultant would play and what the client's expectations are. So one role is that you're the expert. Right? They expect you to know everything and to tell them what to do. On the flip side, you're what he calls a pair of hands. <laughs> You're a warm body. <laughs> they know what to do, but they don't have enough time to do it. And they want you to just shut up and do what you are told. And then in the middle, there's more of a collaboration where the, the, client, the client doesn't want you to come up with the solution. They want to work with you to come up with the solution. And none of those models are wrong, but you have to know what they expect of you so that you can play the right role. And when we look at when things go wrong in client engagements, and this includes you know, when you're working with your internal clients, a lot of it is at the core of, you know, you wanted to be the expert, but they were looking for a pair of hands. <laughs> and so the more that you can have that discussion, that's one of the, a, a big thing that really helps. Um, I would say the second thing is to uh, listen for what people mean and not what they say. So sometimes they'll ask you for a report. They'll say, I want a, I want a hits report. <laughs> some, some, crazy, some crazy report. Or sometimes a, a path analysis. I want a path analysis. Right? So rather than just giving them that report, I always encourage my consultants and, and you know, my, my internal clients when they're working with their uh, clients as well, is to try to understand what it is that they're trying to get at. Because it might not be the, the path analysis report. <laughs> you might want to still get them that, but what you're trying to do is to help them achieve whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. And so sometimes that's going to mean bringing in some additional information that they didn't know to ask for. I think those are my, my two best tips, I would say. Interesting. And if, let's say, you have, I don't know, a big corporation with the CEO comes to you and say, well, what do I have to do to create a data-driven company? So what yep. would you advise them? Yeah. Um, my advice would be to start small and be patient. <laughs> It doesn't happen quickly. And to be honest, it doesn't matter how much money you throw at it. So if a CEO thinks they can throw, a, I can get there faster if I throw a lot of money at it, it just doesn't happen. You can still throw a lot of money at it, but it, culture is something that takes time. And uh, it, it starts with getting all the foundation pieces in place, having a strategy, having that foundation of you know, the people, the processes, and technology. And all those things have to work together. 
where you can actually build confidence in the data and, and teach people how to actually make decisions based on them. Right, and, and the other side, I mean, analysts that are looking to, to grow in the web analytics field, so yep. what would you advise them? I mean, what's important to, to advance a web analytics career? Yep. Um, I, I get the question a lot, um, probably because I run a consulting team, right? So I get a lot of questions of people wanting to get into the field. You know, what should I do? And um, my suggestion for people who are trying to break into the field is to uh, get certified on one of the tools. So I think the easiest way in when you have a, a really a market that doesn't understand what web analysts do they do understand the names of the tools, <laughs> and you can get credibility pretty fast by saying you're Site Catalyst certified, <laughs> right. and then then you have a foot in the door. I see. Uh, so that that's one of my my recommendations. If you're trying to get in fast, that would be it. Uh, the other would be to get practice, build case studies, show that you can actually have, you've actually done something. And there are lots of nonprofit organizations that would love some help. Volunteer your time, put Google, Google Analytics on there, use Site Optimizer, and really show that you can make a difference, and, and that will help you get in. Um, once you've been in consulting, and, and you really want your career to, you've decided you want to be an industry thought leader, right? <laughs> One of the things I recommend is that you have to find you have to find your place. You know, it, it's like uh, it's like with marketing. In order to be top of mind, you have to be the very best at whatever that thing is. You got to mark out your 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 top of mind space. So you have to find something that you can be the expert on that somebody else is not already the expert on. Yeah. And I think we're lucky in analytics right now because there are so many things <laughs> that we, we don't have established experts on yet that I, I really think there's an opportunity for people to continue to step up and, and, and be the subject matter expert of, of something that they get really passionate and excited about. Segment and conquer. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, you, I think I remember the, your presentation on uh, on the metrics, uh, Washington DC in 2007, called Pimpy Reports. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it was the first one, but uh, I remember that I think it was the highest rated in all of the conference uh, history. I remember Jim saying that. <laughs> so now you have the workshops, Pimpy yep. Reports. Uh, and what what are the, you know, some tips that you can give on creating better dashboards? Or yep. Um. So with, within the workshop, it's a full day workshop, the, the first section of the day we talk about KPI definition. So how do you figure out what should even be on your dashboard? That is the first step. <laughs> the, the second piece is around visualizations. So how do you know when you should use a line graph, when you should use a column graph? They're not interchangeable. <laughs> they serve different purposes. And then the third one is I show them how you can uh, build a dashboard out of Excel. And I show them some really cool Excel tips. So you, know, you don't have to wait for the big budgets to get approved. You can do something you know, right away to make your dashboards better. So those are the things that I think are important. One, first figuring out what should be on your dashboard. The second one is really getting a grasp on visualizations. And I recommend Stephen Few. I think he has some excellent yeah. books. Yep. And there's a, a new one out. Was maybe I guess maybe it's been about a year now. But but there's a book about. Uh, it's written by someone from the Wall Street Journal, and about how they do their business visualizations. I and that's really. I think it's beautiful data. Is it no? No, no, no. That's that's Tufty. Okay. I think so. it's literally. Wall Street Journal something, something. Yeah. <laughs> you know? mm. Wall Street Journal infographics maybe. Okay, I'll add a link to the to the video. <laughs> oh. That's good. Mm. Um, 
so those are, are good books to help you with visualizations. Okay. Um, when it I get people people ask me a lot to give them feedback on their dashboards, and I can tell you the number you know the top things they do wrong. Um, one of them is that there's no place for my eye to go. D uh, dashboards are very visual. So you need to think of them like layout, you know, like a, a marketing advertisement. You want their eye to go to like some focus area. So you have to have whatever's your most important, which you've decided because you've identified your KPIs, right? <laughs> Those are bigger than everything else and they have the best real estate. Uh, the second thing is, and this one I've, I've never understood. So many of the visualizations that I see, the graphs and charts, the font is so small, <laughs> you couldn't possibly read it. You couldn't possibly read it. And um, I, I don't know how they could expect any other feedback then. I can't read that. <laughs> but uh, of all of the things, I would say those are probably the top. Yeah, that sounds very smart, in fact, that you should look at the dashboard just like you look to a website. I mean, when you're optimizing, you want people to look at the call to actions and to see big bullets or whatever exactly. know, titles and so exactly yeah. it's interesting so how do you see i mean the industry has been moving quite fast last year with acquisitions and we can see many huge companies talking about analytics and how they they're creating data driven companies yep. so how do you see the industry moving in the next i don't know year two years or yeah. Um, so, so I have a theory that the everything the, will end. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, I have this dream. No. <laughs> I have a theory that the the analytics maturity models that that we're used to seeing, you know, that this is you're this stage, and then you go to this stage, and then you go to this stage. I think those are dead. Because what I'm seeing now are a lot of companies who are, are still starting into the model and they can't afford it. They need to be able to leapfrog. So they, they still might need to follow all of those steps, but there has to be a way to jump over everybody else. Otherwise, by the time you get there, those people will be two years ahead of you, right? So. Uh, the way that I'm seeing companies leapfrog and sort of get to where they, they need to be without having all the painful steps that everybody else had to take along the way, uh, I, I see them jumping to uh, multi-channel and I see them jumping to uh, optimization. And that's unusual because, as you know, if you're, if you're following along the model, you know you have all your web analytics in place first, and then you think about optimization and within your channel, and then you think about <laughs> multi-channel. And uh, I, I'm seeing that go differently. And so I think that I, I know there there was a lot of discussion at least last year on whether or not we are the Web Analytics Association or the Online Marketing Optimization, <laughs> whatever the name should actually be. And uh, I, I don't know the answer to that, but, but I do think that, that Web Analytics, if we're thinking of it as only a website, that we're way past that. And that as an industry, we're not going to go back to that. <laughs> I think we're going to keep expanding, but at the same time, uh, for all of the people who think we're going to be like BI, I disagree with that. So my thought on that was, you know, those BI groups have been around a long time, yes. and they don't have any more power in the organization <laughs> than we do. <laughs> I don't want to be like them. <laughs> they spend a lot of money, a lot of technology, and everybody complains that they can't get any insight out of them. So i um, happy to work with those people, but, but I would not like to see our industry become like BI, right? I think there's an opportunity for us to focus on those in insights, fast and efficient, multi-channel, and, and be something different. A customer insights team instead of 
instead of just BI or instead of just web analytics. Sounds like a bright fu future. <laughs> I think it is a bright future. <laughs> I, I, I think it's an exciting industry to be in. So I've been, I've been in web analytics consulting for exclusively for just about six years. And uh, my, my very first conference, um, there were actually literally three Russian rocket scientists <laughs> that were presenting it. <laughs> and it felt, like, it felt like I was in a wind tunnel, right? <laughs> like, wow, if I could only get part of this. And, uh, and now, you know, now I'm at the, the presentations you know, like we had at Umetrics today, and I see what some of the, the companies have accomplished, and wow, <laughs> what a great place to be, what, you know, what opportunity, and I love it. Great, excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. It was you. a pleasure. <laughs>